Hi, and welcome to the Monday Live Recorded. Uh, so this is the pre-record. Why is that? Well, I'm in Devon. I'm in the Two Bridges Hotel down in Devon, hopefully having a lovely time. And uh, so, and hopefully you'll enjoy this broadcast. I basically work Monday to Wednesday down there. So those of you who like the Teams, the Teams is on Thursday evening. Apologies for that, Thursday evening. Uh, this week and the Friday as a normal and then we have a normal week and then I go off again uh, So I'm doing a bit of travel. In fact, uh, most of the travel this month is uh, Devon and Cornwall and then off to Tunisia, etc. But I will keep you posted With all of that and hopefully some of you will come with me. You never know. You never know um, And uh, you can see all of those events variously on the website um, uh, I think I've been asked to show you that one the in on the prom in on the prom somewhere where we've been regularly In the past um, Gwen is doing the events up there for, the, for us at the moment in Lancashire uh, That is in St. Anne's um, I haven't been up there for a long time I must say but we are doing those northern ones don't forget we've got one in Annick and if it all goes well, hopefully um, we will try uh, another one there, but also another one perhaps um, at a sister hotel along the way. So we'll sh we shall see. That's exciting. What are we dealing with? Well, we are openers rebid, of course. We are finishing that topic this week. Now, usually that involves lots of example hands, etc. But I kept on getting asked questions. And so uh, the question this time was, what about when the opponents come in? How does that affect our rebid? And we will look at that. I think that's quite interesting. So that's what we're going to look at today. The both disturbed rebids and changed rebids. So that's quite interesting. On Fridays, we are responding to overcalls. Last Friday, uh, we looked at whether we always bid to the level of the fit. So that was quite interesting. Um, but we are then going to be looking at responding to overcalls without support. And that's sort of the focus because we've done supporting before. But I wanted to look at just the general ways of, uh, of responding to overcalls. So you can always come along. Obviously, the members get all of the broadcasts free. But if you're a non-member, you can always join one of ours at any point if you wish. I'll just have a quick check what the offer there it is it's the special offer uh this week so you get a half price friday if you fancy that and uh, at three pounds fifty so you're welcome to join us if you wish we are going to have the five level decision uh which is an interesting one this time quite a long auction um that's a little hangover and then we'll see so let me show you that i think that's a good way to start isn't it let's start with that five level decision so let's get to q plus um, now, nobody's vulnerable on this one. I think this is an interesting one. Always tough, these things. So it goes one club from north. You have a two-suited call. But generally, if they open a minor and you've got this kind of hand, I tend to bid the major. Now, if you play a specific um, Michaels bid, uh, but here, two clubs, you see, two clubs would show both majors, wouldn't it, in most, in most books? And I wouldn't want to bid two no trumps with this hand with a 5-5 five, five shape and such a nice heart. So I'd prefer a one heart overcall. It then goes a spade. Three hearts from north. Three spades. Now we're not at the five level yet. So you've quite rightly hopefully worked out that um, this isn't the question. Hopefully you're going to bid what I bid. And that I think is important. I'm going to bid four diamonds here in this auction. I think it's important. We're not in a Q bidding situation here. We're not trying for a slam. What we are doing is we are predicting how the auction will progress. We are not going to be naive here. We know that Bidding four hearts is not the difficult decision. The difficult decision is whether we bid over four spades, because surely 90% of the time South is going to bid four spades in this auction. So we're bidding four diamonds to try and help us make the right decision. So it now goes four spades. Annoyingly, partner passes that. So it's all up to you. OK, so that is the question. 
So it's got a club, you've overcut a heart, a spade, three hearts, three spades. You then bid four diamonds. Four spades pass, pass, and it's your bid. So nobody's vulnerable. See what you think about that. Five level decisions are not easy. And as I've discussed many a time, many, many a time, if you get just half of them right, you're doing pretty well. We'd like, I mean, I suppose it's a 50-50 guess. You'd hope to get half of them, but maybe if you could get 60%, I think you're doing pretty well. I suppose an expert's looking for 65, 70, um, but no more than that. So that means three out of 10 times you expect to be wrong. Um, so, you know, you've got to be a, be prepared to get things wrong. Okay. Um, just a quick little touch on the festive because we've got that offer on a number of you will know that we have got the offer of uh, uh just a, a discount on the christmas um and new year events and of course we like to sort of mention also then we're doing our first christmas cruise since covid so it's a first christmas cruise since covid that one let me go back to it okay so do have a think about that if you fancy it obviously you've got plenty of time but some of you like to plan your christmases early and of course I'm off to Iceland and Tunisia, uh, Iceland and Tunisia. Iceland is a cruise with my family and Tunisia is, um, is a hotel out in Tunisia where I'm, I'm there for two weeks. My family's actually joining me there as well. You're probably thinking Alfie will be well traveled. I think he probably will. So plenty going on. Let me, you can always see all of that. Um, on the holidays website. Here we are talking Openers Rebid. Openers Rebid. And just to remind ourselves the basics, the basic rule is that you must bid again if partner responds in a new suit. Now that is if partner responds in a new suit. We're going to look at one instance today where partner does not respond at all and the other one where the opponents come in after partners responded. So both the disturbed rebid and the changed rebid. So you do plan your rebid, but you do have to understand that that is based upon your partner showing six or more points by making a response to you. OK. OK, so if partner changes the suit, you must bid again. Of course, if partner bids one no trump, he's described his hand six to nine points. So if I've only got 14 or 15, I don't have to bid again because I know game isn't on. So it's when partner changes suit that we are forced to make another bid. So when the opponents interfere, those two options are if partner has not bid. So when there's an immediate overgall and partner passes, it's important to remember he's shown nothing. OK, all right. And the other one is when it goes one of a suit pass, one of a suit from partner or two of a suit or whatever. Overcall from the opponents. Less common that one, but annoying all the all the way. Uh, or you know, and a, a couple of people did actually send an email about that. Well, what about if I can't bid my the bid I want to? Be careful, as we'll see. Let's start off with the first one, the reopening situation, where you open the bidding. There's an overcall, and it goes pass pass. So it's an interesting situation. This, um, and my first question is usually. Basically, what has your partner shown you? And it's really important to understand your partner shown you zero. OK, so your planned rebid is based upon the fact that your partner shows you six points. And therefore, you feel safe rebidding one no trump. You've got 15 to 17. Your partner's got at least six. You feel quite happy. If your partner's got zero, then rebidding one no jump on 15 points is not going to be such fun. And if a double comes on it, you will get into trouble. Therefore, things change. This is what I mean by changed rebids. So remember, you don't have to bid. The opponents have come in. If your partner's got zero to five points and you haven't got much, well, it's possible the opponents are not in the right contract. Interestingly, you, they will often not have a fit in this auction because the partner has not supported the spade overcall. So that's interesting as well. So what options do you have? 
Well, I'm not going to look at the rebid options of bidding a second suit here or doubling, for example, is an important option. What I'm really focusing on here is the no Trump options. What do you think your no Trump options are? OK, well, the key here is if you've planned to rebid no Trumps with 15 points, I'm not sure you need to make a bid here. Now, if you have shortage in spades, so two or fewer, maybe you had a 15 count with a doubleton spade, then of course you can make a takeout double here. Partner, I'm short in spades, you choose the suit. I want to compete for the hand. But if you're completely flat, for example, a 4 3 3 3 hand or something like that, well, then actually you don't really want to compete for the hand. I mean, those flat hands actually would prefer often simply to let the opponents play. If your partner could have zero, I don't think we can afford to bid one no trump with 15 points. 16, mm, I still think that's borderline. So what do you think one no trump shows? Well, the crucial element here is I think it shows a good 17 to 19, maybe 17 to 19, let's say. So notice that I'm only bidding one no trump in this auction with 19 points. And there's a good reason for doing that, because if partner's got zero to two, not only will you only have 19 plus two points, 21 points, but you can never get to your partner's hand. So you will be much, much happier being in one no trump than you would be in two no trumps. Okay. Now, it is true that partner could have more than five or six points. Sometimes he will choose to pass. Maybe he hasn't got four hearts in his hand. And with seven or eight points, he still found it difficult to make a bid. But of course, he can react to your bid. If your partner has got eight points, if I rebid one no trump saying I'm OK to play in one no trump if you've got zero partner, well, then with eight points, I'd hope he would raise me. And in fact, with eight points, I'd expect him to raise me to three no trumps. Now, this does require partnership trust. OK, of course, he could always bid two no trumps and then with 19, you'd bid three anyway. OK. So your planned rebid has assumed your partner has six or more points. Therefore, here your partner might have zero. Therefore, you change it. OK, so let's look at a couple of examples. Here you are. You've got 15 flat. You might have downgraded it for the 4333 three, three nature, but you have ace 10 in spades and king 10 nine in diamonds. So I think you downgrade and you upgrade. So for me, this is a 15 count. I downgrade a full point for the 4333 three, three shape, but I upgrade for the two tens with higher honors. Um, for me, this hand is worth 15 points. So I'm planning to rebid one no trump. Had the auction gone one diamond pass one spade, pass, I would have rebid one no trump. My partner would have shown me six points. Here it hasn't. It's gone one diamond, one spade, pass from your partner, pass. Now, if you bid a no trump here, you could easily end up in trouble. OK, your partner's maybe got two or three points. You might not get doubled, in which case you'll probably go a couple off. And it might be OK. But the thing to bear in mind here is often they will not have a fit. As I say, who knows, they might have a fit somewhere else, but not in spades, because I usually expect the partner of the one spade overcaller to support to two spades. So it's not going to surprise me if partner's got three or four spades on this hand. I've got a flat hand, no particular interest to play in a contract. So I would pass with this hand. Now, it's always tricky, but very often it'll get you the better score. Because if you bid something now, as I say, if you bid a no trump here, you might get away with it. You might get away with it and only go two off undoubled. Now, that's if you're non-vulnerable. I haven't given you the vulnerability here. If you're vulnerable, you can see that a lot of the time in one no trump, it's not going to be great fun. OK, they'll lead a spade. Obviously, the spade overcall probably has an entry. So they'll lead a spade. They'll make four spade tricks. They're likely to make a few clubs a heart and, and, and some diamonds. It's, it's pretty ugly. If the king of diamonds is if, if the ace of diamonds is in the north hand, you could easily just make four tricks most of the time, and that will not be a good score. In a spade, how will they do? Well, I could, let's put the ace of diamonds in the south hand. Well, if the ace of diamonds was in the south hand, I think there's a fair chance one spade will only just scrape home. 
East is likely to lead the eight of diamonds. And if the diamonds break, let's say, four, three, you've got six of them. You might get a diamond rough here, in which case you'll make four tricks outside diamonds. Um, and the king of diamonds and a rough. So that would only be 80 points for De Clare because he's not really in a fit. In fact, I think North South would prefer to be in no trumps themselves. Does that make sense? Um, you know, they, they, they will do reasonably well in a no trump contract. I think all we will make is five tricks at the most, most of the time, in which case they can make 120. As it is, though, if they're left in a spade, the most surely they're likely to make is 110. Um, in which case, um, you're better off just leaving them there. So not easy that. You've planned to rebid one no trump, but you have to unplan when your partner is non-responsive. OK, let's just change the hand, make it a bit stronger. 18 points and a couple of tens. So again, although you're 4333 in shape, and I like to downgrade that with two strong tens, as it were, a 10 with the king, 10, 9 of diamonds, and ace, queen, 10 of spades, I would be upgrading for that reason. I mean, obviously, the spades are not necessarily in the best place. Remember, your left-hand opponent has been spades, but I think you're happy that this hand is strong. Be careful. A lot of people will have made the plan of rebidding two no trumps and want to rebid two no trumps here. The problem is, is that a lot of the time you've got 18, maybe North's got, I don't know, 12 or 13 points. Your partner's just got, well, the same two or three points he had on the last hand. And if you bid two no trumps, you make your life a lot more difficult. OK, for me, a one no trump bid when partner has shown nothing should show 17 to 19 points. OK, 17 to 19 points. Partner, I've got a good enough hand to play in one no trump, even if you have got zero. OK, ideally, partner, give me two or three points. So I give partner the same hand there. OK, and you can see that one no trump is not necessarily comfortable, but it's a lot more comfortable than two no trumps. I think that's the key here. Um, I mean, if North avoids leading spades, perhaps, well, it's going to be difficult. He has to lead something, and that's the advantage. But let's say he leads a spade and eventually South gets the lead and leads another spade. Then you might only make two spades, two, two or three hearts, a diamond, a club. I mean, you, you might scrape home. You might get home um, in one no trump, but or one no trump might go one off or something like that. But I think you're in the best contract. You do not want to be in two no trumps. On a good day, two no trumps might make. But believe you me, you'd prefer to be in one no trump plus one. So don't forget, you plan your rebid. But if your partner doesn't respond, then you need to change your thinking. OK, so when partner hasn't shown anything, one no trump shows 17 to 19, all of your strong no trump kind of hands. OK, there's no need to jump here. And um, if in doubt, I mean, your other option, don't forget, you do have the double as an option here to, as takeout. But here I prefer no trump because it sums up my hand. For me, a double, what's called a reopening double, says I'm short in spades. So my double would say partner, I'm short in spades. If I go back to the previous one there, the, you know, again, you might think, well, could we have doubled on this one? But you've, you've got an eight loser hand. You've got four high cards. And if partner's only got one, as he is here, you really don't want to be competing for the hand. So remember, um, the double is, just showing you this hand again, double is for takeout. And generally, we'll do that when we have two or fewer spades. Partner, you choose the contract. Double will work OK here, because I think two clubs is quite a nice contract. Um, it would go double two clubs. But again, I think probably one no trump looks quite nice as well. OK, what about the disturbed rebid? Sounds a bit strange. That sounds a bit like nightmares. OK, what do I mean? Well, what I mean is when the auction goes like this. So you have a normal start to the auction. You are just about to get your rebid out. And annoyingly, in comes two hearts. Now, this can sort of come, this can also come in the auction one diamond, one heart overgall, one spade, two hearts. So you can also have 
the idea of a supported overcall, but that's slightly different. Here, you were just about to make a bid. That two heart bid makes your life a misery because it's just taken out the whole of the two level. Now, um, I, I think it was the Isle of Wight earlier this month where I was discussing the idea of interference and why we overcall. Well, of course, the power of that two heart bid, yes, it can be risky. But the power of it, of it is that it completely wipes out probably any bid West was going to bid other than, um, let's say, a spade supporting bid. Well, he can bid that anyway. So what do we bid? And the major, major thing to remember here is just simply be careful. Be careful. You do not have to make a bid here because your partner has another chance to call. Remember, your diamond opening bid has said you have opening strength. So if you only have your 12 to 14 or 12 to 15 point hands here, quite often you'll be passing and leaving it up to partner. When might you bid? Well, you might bid with support, two spades showing a weak hand with support. You can make your normal wee bid in no trumps here. I mean, you'd probably want to be a bit stronger than 15 to bid two no trumps here, but you might, if you have a double stop with hearts, you might stretch, you know, and, and bid two no trumps possibly. Um, but a new suit, a new suit at the three level is forcing to gain. So I know a lot of you will do it. You'll bid three clubs here thinking, well, I might as well. Come on, I'll show my second suit. But your partner is not allowed to pass a three club bid here. So if you bid three clubs, your partner will have to respond. And essentially that's pushing us to game, isn't it? Because if he doesn't like either of our suits, he's going to bid three no trumps. And, and really, we should play three clubs in this auction as forcing to game. If you've got weakish hands, then you just simply pass and let partner open. Your other option, of course, is a double. We'd still play that as takeout in this auction. And so all it would say is, partner, I'm short in hearts. We should be competing for the deal. Does that make sense? OK, partner, we should be competing for this deal. Um, I want to bid again. OK. All right, let's look at some examples. So here's the classic one. You open a diamond here, one spade from your partner, an annoying two heart overcall. So you were just about to rebid two clubs and have a relatively comfortable auction, and you've got this two heart bid coming. Do not bid three clubs here. Three clubs forces your partner to bid, and you can see what's going to happen. Probably over three clubs, your partner will bid three no trumps or three spades. Either one is just as bad, but he'll probably bid three no trumps with a heart stopper. They knock out the ace of hearts, and where do you go? You make five tricks. Well done you, as it were. So you really don't want to be bidding there. I mean, the likelihood is they'll, well, they'll, they'll certainly make seven tricks, won't they? Um, you'd expect a two heart bidder to have six hearts and possibly one of the high clubs. So, so th two no trumps would be a disaster. Three no trumps uh, would, would, would certainly be a disaster. So you pass. Now, does East bid? That's tricky, and it's not always easy here. Uh, it turns out we want to be in three clubs. Okay, We want to be in three clubs, and I think probably we'll end up in two hearts here. I don't think East should be bidding. Non-vulnerable should he be? I mean, he might dredge up a two-spade bid. What's interesting, I don't think he should. I think it should be a better spade suit than that. King, 10, 9, 8, 7, or something like that. What's interesting, though, is if he does bid two spades, you could then choose three clubs. And now you haven't shown a strong hand and your partner can leave you in three clubs. Three clubs is where you'd love to be on this hand. I don't think it's easy to finish there. It's important that we can't do a takeout double because we've got no support for spades. So on this hand, if you double two hearts, your partner would certainly bid two spades. OK, because because he's assuming you'd have some kind of support for it. I think probably two hearts is going to get passed out. We'd love to finish in three clubs, but if you bid three clubs, you don't finish in three clubs. You bid, you finish in three no trumps or three spades or whatever it is, but it won't be three clubs. OK, so be careful. How about this? All right, I've given you a bit more strength here. So you've opened a diamond. It's got a spade from partner, two hearts again. 
Now, I don't think you can bid three clubs. Uh, you haven't got the distribution and you haven't got the strength. 16 isn't that much in, in the context of this auction. You know, remember, if your partner has nine or 10 points, as we're going to look at in a moment, he should be trying hard to make a bid because he knows it's our hand. So I'd expect partners to bid most of the time with those kind of hands. Here I am going to make a call. What would you call? I think I'd probably double. I think I'd double. I'm short in hearts. I've got a modicum of spade support and I've got the other two suits and I'm longer in the one I've bid. So I think it's a nice descriptive bid. I'm not saying we'll finish in a great contract. Your partner will probably bid two spades here. It's one of those unusual hands where your opponents have a fit, but we don't. We have seven card fits in each suit, but I think two spades looks, it's not the worst, um, worst contract. If they manage to lead a spade and then another spade, it, it's not so nice. But if they lead a heart, which they often will, um, then you might, you might be able to get a, a heart laughing. Um, but, um, you know, you're, you're going to do all right. And two, and two spades going maybe one off uh, might be better than two hearts. Uh, it's a fine line. It'd be a close call, won't it? Because two hearts might struggle as well. But I think, you know, you've got to try and compete for these hands and double it is an option. You've got partner. I'm short in hearts. You choose. And of course, partner might have had four clubs, as we'll see. OK. What about when the auction is like this? So this time we're looking at your bid after the opener has passed. And the reason I want to look at that is because of the problems we've just seen. It's really important for the responder here to respect the fact that the opening bidder has been disturbed. Does that make sense? So the opening bidder has been disturbed. So it's our bid to try hard to bid again if we can. Now we've got if we've got six points and a pile of rubbish, Obviously, we just pass, hope, hoping they've missed something. OK, but if you've got a decent hand or you're short in hearts, you want to come back in and try to find the best thing. So you should understand that your plan might, your partner's plan might have been ruined by the overcall. OK, OK, so let's have a look. Double, rather like we've just seen, is important. So let's see. So it goes a diamond, pass a spade, two hearts. West with just 14 passes. Remember, not shortage in hearts. Now it comes around to East. Only seven points, but you feel it's a 20-20 hand. And if you're short in hearts, there's a fair chance that the opponents have found a fit. And if they've found a fit, we want to try and find a fit. And what we'd like to do is allow our partner to pick our best fit. So this is a classic double. Partner, I'm short in hearts. I haven't really got that much support for your first bid suit. Otherwise, with three cards in diamonds, you might just bid three diamonds on this kind of hand. Does that make sense? Sort of thinking, well, that's probably our most likely fit. The double invites your partner to try and choose what he thinks your best fit is. And clearly looking at his hand, he is going to respond three clubs. Are you happy with that? And that is the way you compete for the hand. If you bid three clubs straight away with this hand, East should bid again. OK, so if it goes one diamond pass, one spade, two hearts, three clubs over call, East should either bid four clubs or three no trumps with his hand. OK, because three clubs is forcing to gain a new suit at the three level. OK, it's a serious bid. So it's really important that the opening bidder chooses to pass a lot of the time on his weaker hands and allows West to reopen the auction. OK, and now when we bid three clubs, OK, we're not showing any strength, extra strength. And obviously three clubs is a comfortable contract. OK, um, and, and you should do OK in it. Right, but you wouldn't want to be any higher, as it were. 
Okay, so that is that. There's a, it, it's quite a big subject, if I'm honest, and I think we've certainly touched upon it a number of times in the Friday Lives. So um, that is something that um, you can look up again uh, in, in those uh, things, those of you who are on the website. Or if you're not on the website, come and join us. You can always just do it for a month and look up the great volume of topics we've got. And some of those Friday sections where we talk about disturbed bids and takeout doubles and when a bid is forcing or not. Um, there's all sorts of things to feast upon. OK, well, we've got, don't forget, the beginners section to come up. We've got the bidding quiz to finish. I've still got the five level decisions, though, don't I? So let's go to that. Where were we? Well, let's let's cover that auction again. It went one club from north. We overcalled a heart. One spade. Three hearts from our partner. Bidding to the level, level of the fit is what I expect for that. So I think partner's got four card heart support. No, no other thing to report. Three spades by north. Why have we bid four diamonds? Well, the reason we bid four diamonds is because generally it is only right to confidently bid to the five level when you have a double fit. So by bidding my second suit, I am allowing partner to make a, the right decision. And for me, that's key here. You have told partner what's in your hand. And if you trust your partner, your partner should make the right decision. So it's gone four spades and your partner has chosen to pass. This is not a forcing auction here. So it's not like the forcing pass auction. So if we'd been the opening side, if I, my one heart was an opening bid and partner would jump to three hearts, genuine support, and then I'd bid four diamonds, almost trying for a slam, very different situation. But then we'd be in a forcing situation. For me, I have no idea who is making or not, but playing pairs, I just want to get it right. And my partner has said, we don't really have a double fit. And what that means is quite often our high cards might be better in defense than attack. You cannot be sure, but having given partner the opportunity to make the decision, I am going to pass it. OK, I'm going to trust my partner. So let's open up the hands. So it's got a club, a heart, a spade from South Normal. I mean, if you play, if you've agreed to play weak jump responding bids, you can do them. I have to say I'm not keen. I always find preempting partner does tend to end in a lot of tears a lot of the time. It's good when it works, but it ends up in tears too many times when you don't have that fit, as it were. So in one club, one heart, one spade, three hearts is a good bit from West. Um, just what we're talking about on Fridays, of course, bidding to the level of the fit there. So um, four hearts plus five in partner's hand is nine. Let's bid to three hearts. Once East has found a fit, so three spades again, I think a good bid from North, expecting at least five spades in partner's hand because he could have done a negative double with just four. So I like the three spade bid. I know it's a flat hand, but I think you've got a support. East, once he's found a fit, five, five hands are gorgeous. So six lose a hand, so he's definitely going for game. But I love the four diamond bid. What it says is, partner, I have a second suit. It's not a cubid. We're not looking for slams or things here. We're the overcalling side. It says, partner, I've got a second suit. Look at your hand. If you fit with that second suit, it's almost always right to bid to the five level with a double fit. West looks at his hand and decides it's not right to bid. OK. And I think we should get the auction right. And again, we get the uh, so I think we should get the defense right. And the reason we get the defense right. Is because. Um, I mean, let's have a quick look at it here. Um, I, I'll take control of you. I think you're going to leave the Queen of Hearts here. OK. And that wins. But because of partner's bid. I think we can lead a diamond now. OK, even better, even better. I think the ten of diamonds, I think actually leading the ten of diamonds here is best. OK, and it makes sure of the defense. Let's have a look. 
So the Ten of Diamonds goes, North decides not to take a finesse here. Okay, he draws trumps. And let's see what happens. He's drawing all of the trumps. Okay, might as well exaggerate. And I think he's going to have to play on clubs. He's played a heart. I think quite important for, I think we'll win that. We'll put the queen up. And of course, we're just going to play another heart. And there's not really much that De Clara can do about that. And so we nicely take, we've taken the contract down there. Obviously, we're going to take the ace of clubs as well. So De Clara only makes nine tricks. Clearly in five hearts, how are we going to do? Well, I think, I think, you know, we're going to lose a club, a spade and a diamond. Not always that defence might not always get it perfect. Um, but um, on the Queen of Spades lead, I think North might overtake with the ace, uh, with the King, sorry. Um, and then switch to the Queen of Clubs. That looks the most normal defence. Um, and you're going to always lose at least three tricks. So five hearts would go one off at the same time as four spades going one off. Now playing teams is not the end of the world. It's only 100 difference or you might get doubled 150. So you might play safe by bidding five hearts. Playing pairs, you just need to do the right thing. And the right thing here is passing four spades. I mean, you could say that the right thing is doubling four spades, but that's going to look a bit silly if four spades had made him. OK, I think if partner had had um, for four, if partners, clubs and diamonds were inter interchanged, you would probably want to be in five hearts. OK, and you may well make five uh, hearts. Not quite, um, but they will certainly make their contract. OK, so if you've got a double fit, go for it. If not, then don't. And the key for me here is that you told your partner what you had, so trust your partner's decision. If you don't show your second suit, you've sort of then got a guess. But by showing your second suit, you've allowed the partnership to decide. So if you trust your partner's pass of four spades, then you pass as well, or at least don't bid on. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Let's have a look at that quiz. So remember the bidding quiz, you can get the answer um, online, um, whether you're a member or not, here. Uh, nobody was vulnerable, and you don't have to open the bidding here. I'm quite happy if you don't. Unfortunately, though, you are not in charge of the opening bid. And you looked at the quality of your suits. You added your 10 points to the two five-card suits, which makes 20. Um, so it's the guideline of 20 and with two quality suits, including two tens, I think one heart is a good opening bid. Because one no trump overcall by north though, and then your partner doubles. Pass and it's back to you. So one heart, one no trump, double, pass, and it's back to you. Nobody's vulnerable. And it's your turn to call. So good luck with that one. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I wasn't here live with you. I will be back for those of you on, on, on the site. We are playing the teams, the pies teams, in fact, on Thursday. That's the 29th of February, of course, the last day of the month. And we're also live on Friday. Enjoy your week. And for those of you who want to join me for the, excuse me, the second novice bidding quiz, you are welcome, because that is where we're going now. So here we are. Um, we are looking at um, just just a, a few more quizzes, really. Uh, nothing spectacular. Uh, just wanted to test the knowledge that we've been accumulating over the last six, seven or eight uh, weeks or lessons. So let's have a look at the second of the lead quiz. We had one last week and then we'll have a, a look at another aspect of novice play. So here we go. Um, again, we're not having a bidding sequence. We're having a mini bridge uh, effect. So declare is south because declare has the most points. Game is in hearts. Um, south has decided on hearts as trumps and it's your lead. Now, I will admit that 
in mini budge usually what happens is declare decides on his contract by looking at dummy so in theory you should be able to see dummy uh, if you're playing mini budge but i want to sort of try and get a, a balance between what an opening lead is like um and not having too many complications so here i want you to open i want you to make an opening lead blind um but knowing that the game is in hearts so one of the rules we said was that in an in a suit contract two touching high cards are enough to lead and the reason we, we we want to use the king and queen of spades on the first two rounds of spades is because very likely someone has just two and if someone has just two then they can rough the third round whether that's declarer or our partner so therefore we like to use the king and queen to, to try and establish a trick quickly uh, so I'm happy to lead a spade and I lead the top of the touching cards. So I would lead the king of spades here, aiming to, to, to develop a quick trick. Remember, we don't like leading isolated on us. So leading the ace of diamonds isn't good here. The king of spades hopefully knocks out the ace of spades and then we've got the queen. Or partner will have the ace and we're able to take uh, two or three spade tricks. Okay, how about this one? Again, it's declare a south game in hearts, and it's your lead. So it's game in hearts, declare is south, your lead. Well, if you remember one of the rules, we don't like leading aces by themselves, and we don't like leading away from those aces. So I don't want to lead a diamond or a club, and actually leading away from solitary honours as a whole is a bit of a gamble. So I'm not going to lead a spade, I'm not going to lead a diamond, and I'm not going to lead a club. And one of the things I try to talk about on a couple of the um, lessons about leading was the idea that a trump is an okay lead. It doesn't necessarily do anything super exciting, but it doesn't give much away either. It forces Declarer to get on and try and establish extra tricks for themselves. So we try to avoid leading away from one honour um, against a suit contract, particularly aces, but kings as well. So here we would just lead the last chance, what we call Hobson's choice, your last option. Not a spade, not a diamond, not a heart, sorry, not a diamond, not a club. So we lead a trump. Okay, one last question. Okay, we're in no trumps by South, and it's your lead. So you're in a no trump contract by south and it's your lead now we've just been talking about not leading away from solitary honors uh, in no trumps it's not such a bad thing because you are trying to develop tricks and generally we look to our longest suit but there's also another word we put in there we tend to lead our longest and strongest longest and strongest so if you've got a choice of two suits to lead of equal length you would tend to lead your strongest so here we've got hearts and diamonds and the idea is is if i lead the fourth highest which if you remember is the convention as it were we use if i lead the three of hearts let's give our partner one high card let's say the king he could win the king and I'd make my ace and queen. And who knows, we might make the last heart as well. In diamonds, though, if you led the three and your partner had the king, well, that might lose to the ace and you still wouldn't have necessarily established a trick. So leading your longest and strongest here. So aiming to establish tricks, we need the fourth highest. And remember, that's from the top. So it would actually be the lowest one you've got here. OK, the fourth highest heart. OK, so we have talked about a lot of leads. We really have. It's, it's such an important aspect of the game. And of course, as you move into the game more and the bidding, etc., you will re realise that the bidding gives us a lot of clues about what to, to lead. And, um, and we'll, we can introduce that later. And we've had some aspects on it. Those of you who are on the site, we'll see lots of seminars on leads, and I do recommend going towards them, um, particularly if you're happy with the basics of bidding as well. Uh, what we're gonna do, look at next, I think, is we will look at 
um, the idea of what the partner of the leader does. OK, what does the partner of the leader do? OK, well, I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, see you again soon.